Hello, good evening and welcome to the Villa Park Podcast. It's me, Rich, and I'm back with George. Um, long time no see, George. Uh, and we uh, will have Kevin joining us a, a little bit later to preview uh, what is a huge game, what will be a huge, huge game, Manchester City against Aston Villa tomorrow night, um, as in Wednesday night. Uh, quarter past eight kickoff, and um, yeah, we could we could go two points behind Manchester City and uh, and really put the pressure on the top three. But um, but yeah, it's all about trying to secure that spot in the top four. And we'll get right into it. We'll get into kind of how Man City will approach it. We'll get into how Villa might approach it. Obviously, there's a couple of injuries there. We'll get into the predicted lineups, uh, predictions for our scores, and uh, and your comments and questions as well. Um, but before we get into it, do please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. I think we are twenty, just uh, I think twenty or twenty-one away from um, three thousand six hundred. So if we could do it tonight, that would be amazing. So like, subscribe, and if you want to become a member, hit the the um, the pinned link at the top of the chat um, just here. Uh, and uh, the link is there and you can become a member for just one night in a month and you become an official Villa Park Pod follower. Um, few comments coming in. Uh, Kool-Aid man says, Man City have no midfield. Um, they will be putty in our hands. Uh, Michelle, good evening to you. Uh, Lewis, good evening to you, mate. I have a good feeling about the match as well. Gene, good evening. And uh, Bear and the Garden, good evening to you as well. And anyone else in the chat, um, good evening. George, like I said, back backstage, long time no see. How are you doing, first of all? Hello, Rich. Yeah, I'm not too bad. Thanks, mate. Yeah, sorry, I've not been on recently. Just life getting in the way, as it as it often does, as you you well know, mate. Babies and wives and just, just <laughs> being busy, mate. But yeah, I'm back back just in time for City away. So um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I wish I uh, wish it was an easier game. We're here to preview, but you know we've got to play them at some time, mate, haven't we? Exactly, exactly. We have to play them at some point, and um, yeah, I do think. We'll get we'll get into it a little bit, but in general, like I said this afternoon, I've I've got a, a, I don't know, like is it? I'm I'm, a, I'm quietly confident that we can get something out of this game. Like I'm just, you know, City maybe aren't quite at the at the best. You know, this is massively tempting fate here, but aren't quite at their kind of flowing best. Um, you know, the 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 there's parts where you can organize well against them or there's parts where you can get at them and they can see goals um you know it's not necessarily a bad time to be playing them right now no i guess not i mean like normally post christmas they just get their foot on the turbo don't they and just blast everyone out of out of sight but this year like you know they're still winning and they're still there but they do, i agree yeah they do look a tad more vulnerable than than years gone by but at the same time they're still there aren't they and I don't know. Uh, it's it's a it's a tough old game. I won't like our rent, our record there is is absolutely horrific as well, isn't it? Over a long period of time, pretty much ever since they moved into that new stadium. God knows how long that's been. But yeah, you know we're doing all right. We had a good win Saturday. That's like a nice. I, I was really pleased with the win against Wolves. Just that was a steady to ship kind of win, wasn't it? Like the home form had started. It had obviously dropped off since since we'd gone the fifteen games winning winning run, and then we'd lost a few. And yeah, I just think we just needed a nice, you know, clean sheet at home to settle the ship. And yeah, and this one, I mean, I don't know, it's maybe I'm being a bit small time, but it still feels like a little bit of a free hit to me. So, you know, we've just got to go in go into it and um, yeah, try our best to get something. Exactly. Uh, you know, I, I think a few people in the chat last night uh, when we were reacting to that Wolves win were saying, you know, let, let's not, let's, you know, let's not look at it too much as a, as a free hit is in a sense, but you know, notwithstanding the, the Tottenham West Ham result today, you know, yeah, with keep to, on that as we speak, yeah, mate. yeah, yeah, as it's one one at the moment. But if that result does kind of go our way, then you are looking at it as like, you know, let's 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 go into it like that. You know, take the pressure off a little bit and let's let's try and you know, let's look at trying to get something out of it. It was it was one of those where I was saying yesterday that we can. We, we, you know, the 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 games against the Arsenal's, the uh, the Man Cities, and the Liverpools, any points from those, any bonus points from those, is 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 exactly that is an absolute bonus. And if we can go into that and and, and try and get something out of it, um, then 
then absolutely unreal. That would be unreal for us, wouldn't it? Yeah, definitely. You know, it's it's like I know, like evening Kev, he's just arrived as we see, but he's yes. always like the optimist here. And like over the last month or so, I've completely forgotten about what's above us. I've just been so concentrated on United and uh, and Spurs. But Kev's always been there to remind us of what's above us and how we're not that far away. And like you say, you know, if we was to if we was to get the win, I mean, what what were they now, Kev? Five five clear of us or something? Yeah, five it is. Yeah, so, you know, we could produce that to two, and all of a sudden, if City can win the league, so can we. So you know, it's still exciting times, and it's all to play for, isn't it, boys? Absolutely. It, it, it's it, exactly, and, and yes, Kev. Uh, if anyone's seen him ghosting in at the far post there, uh, hopefully, like John Duran tomorrow. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it, it is that Kev. You know, I think. I think, you know, obviously Tottenham are playing now. We don't want them to get a, get a, a real positive result. But and Andrew was asked, I think the the, 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 the the journalist asked him, you know, oh, are you are you still kind of looking looking over your shoulder at Man United? Do you still think they can catch you? And he said, well, are, you know, are Arsenal looking over their shoulder because we're eight points behind behind them or something? Does that mean that we can still win the title? It's like, it. it's like it all it, it's all about how you frame it. So like you know, I think Pep was asked about you know what a job Emery was doing, but he wasn't asked, are you worried about about the pressure that Aston Villa could apply and, onto you? And if we get the result tomorrow, as as George said, it's two points. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It is two points. And do you know what? Like I said on the um, the post-match Wolves one, that if we lose, it probably does put t- to bed all of the even possible outside talk that we might, you know, might win, might win the league. But while it's still a possibility, like think about all the times in sport, has it always been the favourites that have always won? Most of the time it is. But there's a reason why there's a betting industry, <laughs> you know. Um, and you, you can name countless situations over the years. You know, I remember w- Wigan winning the FA Cup against Man City. Why do they bother even turning up for the final? Why mm. did Ben Watson get out of bed that morning? You know, he'll remember that for the rest of his life. You know, I was watching Leicester the other night in the Championship. Vardy getting the third goal for them. You know, they've obviously uh, a lot they're going to get promoted. And I remember thinking, what an unbelievable season he had that season with Leicester. And right now, it's 11 men against 11 men on a football pitch. They have got weaknesses. And the reality is, is that, you know, we probably on balance of probabilities will lose the game. They're unbelievable at their home ground. But at some point, they've got to lose. And until the final whistle, and if we lose 4-0 or 10-0 or 3-1 or whatever, then, then so be it. But you've got to go for it. You've got to go for it because it's still possible. And I love those comments from Ange. And I like the fact that, as much as obviously Spurs fans can be a little bit annoying and all that, you know, some of the Matty Cash stuff. I like the fact that they're disrupting. I feel like this Spurs is not that kind of like that big wannabe like Spurs was pre in previous years. It's like a swashbuckling attacking football Spurs. And, and I like it. And I liked it last season in Newcastle, you know, upsetting the apple cart. Well, well, it's Aston Villa now. And why the hell can't we go there and get a result? Even if we got a draw, but look, let, let, let's get the chaos twins on the pitch. Um, you know, <laughs> And um, yeah, let's let's absolutely go for it. Why not? Exactly. Well, you know, I'll, I'll stay with you, Kev. Um, on that, with, with their weaknesses, you know, they've got. I, I don't think Stones will play. I'm not sure. Uh, Kyle Walker's out. Um, okay. So. Uh, Nathan Ake's out. Um, you know, there's a couple of their players that aren't firing on all cylinders. He Keep says out now. As well, Sorry. The keeper's out as well, isn't he? Edison. Keeper's out, yeah. Edison's out. So um obviously Ortega's in. Good goalkeeper, don't get me wrong. But you know, they've 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 got they've got that. They have got one or two weaknesses, and we know that they've they we've caused them problems. You know, look at how Leon Bailey terrorized them the last game, look at what form Musa Diaby's in at the moment. So I know we touched on it yesterday, but they've certainly got weaknesses that we can exploit, Kev. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's, that's, that's football, isn't it? You know, sometimes it's a big, tall striker getting ahead of him. Sometimes it's a, you know, a, a rapid winger getting around the back and loads of players have got qualities and loads of players have got weaknesses and it's on the day, you know, look at, look at this season. You look at the games we've won. We beat Man City and Arsenal back to back. So therefore, how did we manage to lose to Nottingham Forest and nearly lose to Sheffield United? Cause that's football. Mm-hmm. Cause that's football. So I think that this city team is not as 
it's not the same level of force it was in previous seasons. And I know that in previous seasons, it's almost like they've been a bit bored with the league and then they've just clicked into gear. But I don't feel like they've really clicked into that gear yet. And obviously, um, you know, Haaland's been getting a bit, a bit of stick. You know, Sod's Laura Beer will come back tomorrow and play amazing. But he just feels like, you know, I don't know if you've seen that video of him in the warm-up. Have you seen Who? it going around? Haaland. No. There's a video. There's a video. So anyone who's, who's seen it in the comments, please comment. There's a video of a City game, not the last game, of them doing a warm-up before the start of a match. And every time it goes to Haaland, it spoons off his shin and like ruins the warm-up. And it's like four or five times in a row. And it's like the, it's like as if I was there. If I, if I was there, I'd be embarrassed what's going on. So that's got to be in his head. There's criticism of, of him in the press. And the thing is, I, I think about this from a psychological perspective. If there's a little bit of doubt, you have to play on that doubt. That... That kind of veneer of like absolute impenetrability, if that's even a word, like you cannot break them at all. I feel like it's gone a little bit. And I feel like Arsenal might well rue. If Arsenal don't, if Arsenal miss out on the league by one or two points to Liverpool, they're going to rue not going for it a little bit. So, um, yeah, I just, I just think that, look, they've got some fantastic players. And I think De Bruyne is in the best of form compared to what he's been before. Bernardo Silva last year was arguably the, one of the best players in the league. I don't think he's at that level. Um, they've got some quality players, clearly, but you know, defensive injuries. I mean, I, th- I don't think Kovacic is as good as maybe some of the people they've had in that position in the patch past. So, I'm I'm going there full of optimism. Well, I'm not going there, but I'll be watching it full of optimism. Yeah, yeah. Um, George, I think in that game at Villa Park, one player that they I don't think was playing was Rodri, and he's he's massive for them in that in that position. How, having said that, I think they've drawn something like seven games this season, so. It's like, you know, Rodri in that side makes a huge difference. But also on the counterbalance of the, on that, there's also a, a, an element of, yes, they haven't been able to maybe put teams away like they have done in previous seasons. No, I mean, yeah, Rodri, quality, quality player. Um, obviously missed the game, as you just said. But in games previous, he's, he does love a goal against Villa, doesn't he? I can count at least three <laughs> yeah. goals that he scored against us that have... Um, done the damage you know and he's he's odd I think he's like two to one to get the player of the year this year so yeah you know there's no underestimating him but you know look at the home game we we did cause them problems I mean they've not had a, I know it was only one nil but they haven't had a beating like that in god I would say years I mean probably the, the top-notch Liverpool teams of the pandemic give them a no, couple no, of hide-ins but George, we really did give them a going over George not according to Sky Sports sir, apparently Arsenal getting a nil-nil draw was the best performance animals had against them all season apparently. Yeah, I mean that was obviously um we were forgotten in that conversation weren't we as we often are. I did know, I but... did kind of understand what Gary Neville was trying to say. Like it was a different it was a different setup how they set up away from home against um away from home ag- enough, yeah. against against Man City. I did kind of understand what he was saying but yeah, you know, it is it is one of them where it's like let's just Glosser, like he he could have said, barring the Villa Villa game where they went at them, this is another way to play against Man City, and they kind of shut them off. I did. Can, kind like, of can we match that saying. intensity that we had that night? I mean, I've you know people are saying that's the best Villa performance ever, aren't they? And I think there's a decent shout to be fair. I mean, and and really we had that, and then the Arsenal game, and then we fell off for a month, didn't we? Because I yeah. think it took that much out of them playing uh, playing them two different sort of style of games that, you know, we, we ended up losing points afterwards. But, you know, if we can get in their faces and, and put the shits up them again, maybe make them feel like they're not invincible, maybe there is a point, or maybe there's three points there for us. I mean, I'm yeah. trying to think, what, what have they lost? One at home all year? Brent, Brentford always seemed to like a win there, didn't they? But other than that, I can't think of anyone that ever wins there. I think they've lost at home all season. I've had the league, I don't think so. Are they not? I think they've had a couple of people, teams have got draws, draws. there. They've got seven, seven draws this season, so... Yeah, a few um, draws. Yeah, they've had quite a few draws. I mean, they've drawn their last last two in the league, uh, um, home against Arsenal, away against City. Um, they drew again. Chelsea got a draw against them at the mm-hmm. Etihad. Um, so, yeah, like I say, I mean, it, I've not they've they've won a, won a few comfortably, but not not massively. Co- no, like you know, like as in like thrashed teams like they used to do. It's it's been a bit mm-hmm. more kind of like measured against. When they've played, so yeah, hey, like, it's been now, lads, wouldn't you all day long, surely? Yeah, yeah. Hey, do you reckon it's been an Emery master plan? We beat Arsenal and City, obviously, it dropped off a little bit. Do you reckon he's been like getting us to play deliberately, you know, like second and third gear to save him, save us for the running, starting 
with a victory at the Etihad on Wednesday night. He's been like, right, lads, now it's time to get to back to that unbelievable, intense football. We've played the games. Sure, we've lost a couple along the way, but, you know, largely we've kept the points ticking over. Now is the time to say to everybody, here's Villa. Do I, don't, I, don't, I don't think he does that, like, game, like as in, oh, don't do that for this game or do for that for that game. But I think... In certain, during certain games, like say the Wolves game, you go 2-0 up with 20 minutes to go. You go, right, okay, let's let's just let's just get this, make sure we've got this game won. You know, let's just let's just batten down the hatches and just settle down. I think he does I think he maybe does that a little bit more, but I don't think he'll do you know, like hard. Oh, you don't need to put it in for this game. Yeah, yeah, as course. you've already said, as you've already said, you can't you can't guarantee anything in this league. No. Um so yeah, no, um hundred percent. Um few comments. Um I mean, I do I do want to get into into all the comments. So um let's just let's just go. So Jason, not too um positive, can't see us getting anything from the game. Uh, Michael said, good evening. Just finished my taxi duties for your daughter and I join you the same time. Kev, there you go. Um, Adamski saying we'll probably get spanked at City tomorrow, to Stop be it, honest. Stop it, Adamski. Stop it, yeah. <laughs> Dunk says, any point is a, any point's a bonus. Just don't want a heavy defeat ruining the goal difference. Exactly, exactly. Um, apparently, West Ham should be 2-1 up. Rich says, we haven't got to, no fear of City. We absolutely dominated them at Villa Park. Duncan said this may be controversial for some, but I think he thinks we're better balanced without McGinn. Um, Rich renewing his membership for five months. Awesome, mate. Up the Villa, Super awesome, John McGinn, <laughs> Bailey, Emery Ball, keep the faith. Exactly. Um, and uh, Rachel saying they're undefeated with Rodri in the team. Uh, same as Adamski said there. Um, Rodri is a massive miss for them. They play totally different without him, but they have Kevin De Bruyne back and he will be up for the challenge. But he, but Rich thinks Louise will have him in his pocket. Prez is in the house as well, says if we can get a point, that would be a terrific result. And he yeah. also said the central midfield battle worries him. What are your thoughts on that, Kev? Um, obviously, it's like, we'll get asked, we'll get George's predicted lineup in in a minute, but likely to be... Tielemans and, and Louise, um, how do you think that will cope with with you know the likes of Kovacic, Rodri, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera? Yeah, it's going to be it's going to be tricky. Rodri's the one, isn't he? Really, Rodri's the one. I think he's as everyone's touched on, and I just think he's an, I think he's probably the best in the world of what he does in terms of that role. Um, and obviously, he's got the physicality, hasn't he? As well, you know. So you know, he's we haven't really got a player that matches up to that. Um, and then, yeah, you've got, obviously, Bernardo Silva, Kovacic kicking around. I think it depends who he plays. So really, I, I mean, obviously, at, in the home game, he played Stones there, didn't he, if you remember? Mm-hmm. Um, that was obviously an interesting one. And I've obviously got Nunes, who was at Wolves, but I don't think he's done too much for them. I don't think he's going to start. Um, so, yeah, it does worry me a little bit. But the, thing, the other, other thing I'm thinking about with this is, if you look to our team, right, obviously the team that's likely to start, um, you've got to say there's a, quite a lot of confidence in that team right now. You know, the defence has got, you know, a really good clean sheet. Um, and I think that defence with Carlos Torres, I mean, you could probably argue it's our first choice back five. Mm-hmm. If you think you're going to choose Dina or Moreno, I'd go Dina. Carlos, Torres, Conza right back and Martinez. That's as good as we I think we, we could get even with everybody fit. And then if you think Luis is in sparkling form, everyone's talking about him, he's in all the press. Tielemans is in brilliant form. Duran's coming off back of, you know, a couple of great impactful performances. Zaniolo, if he gets a start, I would start him. And we'll talk about teams in a sec. He's um, is in the best moment he's been in his Villa career, as is Morgan Rogers. Then let's clearly talk about DRB was man of the match of the day. Bailey's obviously been really, really good this season. So I look at that team and think, you know what, like, there's got to be a lot of confidence there. And we have to we have to play on that level of confidence to go, you know what, we haven't got the physicality of a Rodri, but if we can get Tielemans and Louise working hard and battling and, go, you know, diving in there, you know, picking up second balls. The one thing we did so well at Villa Park, and it wasn't just McGinn, was win back possession time and time and time again and get in their faces. And I think if we can have that kind of level of intensity, I think um, I, th- I think it's really going to play into our hands. In many ways, you know, I think we're miss- missing a game like this. Possibly Matty Cash. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, just just yeah. obviously quite quite, a, quite an intense player, isn't he? Direct yeah. player, yeah. Yeah. Um, just on that as well, George, I think Kev's right. You know, obviously you're looking at Leon Bailey, 
you know, Leon Bailey, Jeremy Doku was the one all, all at the start of the season. Everyone was talking about being like this. And Leon Bailey is like, you know, absolutely outshone him at, at, at the moment this season, you know, in terms of like the quality and the skill out wide. Again, tempting fate here. But as, as Kev says, you know, we took, and again, we touched on this last night. They're going to have to worry about some of our attacking players as well as as well as like you know the attacking players that they've got. They're going to have to worry about some of the some of the danger that we're going to pose. Yeah, of course. I mean, we've spent we've uh, we've scored plenty of goals this season. It all really depends on what Unai decides to do. Unai might look at Arsenal's approach from Sunday and think, you know what, I'll have some of that as well, and we try and try and get a nil nil. And I wouldn't begrudge him doing that. But at the same time, you know. We've got to try, if the game's there to be won, you've got to go and try and win it. And as you say, yeah, when Doku came in for City, he did look sparkling, to be fair. I watched him his first couple of games and I thought, Jesus Christ, they've signed some player here. But he's fallen off again, as as we always say, don't we? We criticise yeah. our wingers, but they're all the same. All over yeah. the country, they're the same. They they sparkle and then they disappear and they come back again. They're either on it or they're not. So, you know, Bailey's been as, probably as consistent as most wingers this year. We, up there with the best of them, like with the... Jared Bowens and, uh, you know, Sons or whatever, whoever you want to say. So, you know, we've got, yeah, we've got attacking talent there. Obviously, we're really going to miss Watkins. I know you're probably going to go on to that in a minute. That's a big blow for us. And I'd say that if it is Duran that comes in, that ball's need to, going to need to stick to him better than it generally yeah. does. Yeah, but, yeah, he, he looked, he, yeah, he looked good the other night. And that, I think he was up for the battle, but it's a totally different, it's a totally different kettle of fish, isn't it, Kev? You know, that, Away from home, he's probably going to be starved of the ball. He's probably going to have to feed off a fair few scraps until we may maybe get a foothold in the game. But that physicality, maybe running off the shoulder as well, it could be, it could be a, a good game for him. You know, well, it could be absolutely because obviously Ake is going to be out. And he's a physical player, so um, if it's going to be Stones and um, and Diaz, then I feel like he could he can get a bit of change, particularly out of Stones. You know, in terms of his physicality. Um, I do think the physical side of it is something that we are gonna we are gonna struggle with. I think from the win at Villa Park against Man City, which is obviously I, I agree, George, like the best performance I've I've ever seen from an Aston Villa team in terms of how complete it was. Um we're missing McGinn, Kamara's big miss. I think Prez has said it Hopefully. in the comments as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, and obviously Watkins as well. And they're all physical players, aren't they? They're all players that are, you know, put their foot in and get stuck in and high intensity. So the replacements for those well, are they going to be anywhere near like for like? No, but does that also give us some different things that they don't have? Watkins is fantastic, isn't he? But Duran has things that Watkins doesn't have. He's got a un- level of unpredictability that might that might surprise them, you know. And and God, I've, I I can think about over the years, you know. I know we had him at our club for a bit, but you remember like, the unpredictability of Yannick Balassi? Yes, yeah. remember him yes. At, his, at his peak at Palace, and he'd like win some games with just doing some ridiculous things against some, some really big teams, you know. And I just think to myself like. Duran's got something in his locker. And if he has one of his good days rather than one of his days where he doesn't touch the ball for 20 minutes, then then why not? Why not? Um, yeah, it's um it, 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 it's it's gonna be a situation, I think, where um I think you'll start you'll see a lot about Villa from how we start. And I think yeah. if we start really well, it sets a tempo, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. I do think I do think a potential and I'll come to kind of starting predicted starting lineup for you, George, in a minute, but I do think um, a Zaniolo probably is a slightly better option for me than a Morgan Rogers, even though he's played well. Um, he played well against Wolves. I just think that that physicality in that midfield, I think we're gonna we are gonna need. And, and as uh, I think Rachel said, the chaos twins, you know that unpredictability as well. Yeah, he's just such a unit, isn't he, Zaniolo? Like he's. You know, and if he, them two can put themselves about, maybe cause a little bit of problems, and then maybe Rogers comes on later, running with the ball when they're a little bit more kind of, you know, a bit more space opens up later on in the game. That might be the option. I, I'd be, I, I don't know what you boys think, but I'd be maybe tempted to to go with more of a physicality of, of Zaniolo. That's that's um, what I've picked, um, simply because I mean, as you say, Rogers was pretty good the other day. Yeah, you know, he's lovely bit of ball carrying. Looked like he had a bit of freedom, didn't he? But this is a big game and a game that, you know, is way above anything he's ever sort of done before. Whereas Zaniolo is Italy international. He's won the uh, Conference League. You know, he's a bit more experienced, didn't he? So, and he's a big lump, as you say. Yeah, Yeah. of course. Like you say, like, we we call them the Chaos Twins. 
you could also call them the yellow card twins. And I think they kind of <laughs> need to like, they need to nip that in the bud because if, if one of them goes steaming in first. I was going to say, George, is it, is it, is the bet yellow card Duran goal? Any time is that the I'll bet? Just go two two bookings, mate, and then yeah, yeah, whatever. <laughs> but they need to be a bit more disciplined than they have been because get one of them on a yellow after 10 15 minutes, and their game has to change, doesn't it? So I think, yeah, Unai is, will be into them now. If they're both starting, he's going to be getting on their case saying, you know, big game, concentrate, boys. Yeah, I totally yeah. agree. I totally agree yeah, with that. Yeah. I, I think I think that Zaniolo will start. I think he will, based on everything we've discussed, and I do think that. It, you can see a situation where you know a yellow card, rush, t- rush tackle. Three minutes in, you're like, crikey, here we go. They That's probably had a bet with each other to see which one can get booked first. <laughs> yeah, no, no, we don't bet, do that. Should probably have a bet to see which which one can stay out of the book. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so a few people in the comments are saying this. So we'll, we'll get to your predicted lineup uh, now, George. So you've got Martinez in goal, Conza, Carlos, Torres, Luca Dean. I think that that for me is as, this is as solid as you can get. Um, at the moment, Louise and Tielemans, and then Bailey, Zaniolo, and Diaby and Duran. Um, I, I, I can't see anything too like an issue with that. Um, again, would could he could he maybe? Yeah, he's not gonna he's not gonna not play Diaby or Bailey, is he? He's not. I was just thinking, could he put Rogers in there, another tall player with Zaniolo, and sacrifice a Bailey or Diaby and bring them on later on in the game? But a few people in the chat are saying, could he play Zaniolo up top um, um, instead of maybe Duran and then and then maybe play an extra midfielder and almost go, you know, an auxiliary striker, you know, not necessarily play too much. What 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 are your thoughts on that, Kev? Well, I actually think uh, I saw George's team obviously in our group before. I know any change I make to that, I, I'd actually play uh, Tim. I played Tim Tim alongside um, Louise. I played Tiedemans further forward. Um, who would who would you who would come out then? Diaby okay, so mate. So, okay, so you you don't want to have, to, but you would you have Duran still up top? Yeah, I think I would have yeah. Duran still up top with Zaniolo. I, th- I think Zaniolo gives more physicality. I think maybe I'd bring on either a Diaby or a Bailey. But I can see Bailey starting based on his form this season um, as as an impact sub. Um, I just think Zaniolo gives you a bit more gives you a bit more physicality, he's a bit more of a presence as well. Um, I think it gives you a bit more threat as well. If you do manage to, you know, if we're going to be conceding a lot of possession, if you're getting a set piece, if you've got Duran on the pitch, Zaniolo on the pitch, it gives you a bit of physicality as well, doesn't it, in terms of mm-hmm. that in there. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if it is the team that George has put out there, actually. I wouldn't be surprised if Diaby does get a start. Um, I do th- I do actually think he will give Duran a shot, though. I think he will give him a shot to start the game. I think it's I think it'd be wrong of him not to in many ways because I think it's an opportunity for him to show everyone what he's all about. And he obviously he's a confident boy, believes in himself. You imagine before that, you know, it's like literally before the fight, it's like, go on, lad, show the world what you can do. This is Man City. This is the champions of Europe, champions of England. Go and show them why you're the player that AC Milan have been linked with, basically. Yeah, yeah. I was just thinking now, would there be any... Any world where he plays like three cent, I know he's playing three centre backs, but Conza's playing right back. But like a Torres, Carlos, Conza, three at the back. But there's no one who could play right wing back, is there? No, K- no Kane Castle Hayden. Yeah, but he, he ain't gonna. He's not no gonna bring in. For, Do you not remember him in game. the um, when he played for? Was it was it Swindon? Who did he play for in the cup against him? He was yeah, brilliant. He was Swindon, he? Yeah, he was. But I just, but yeah, I, I think Eric Wanham's not not a bad shout. It's just who. You take again your. You take you a Bailey play, or Diaby out, I think. Yeah, and then you're kind of sacrificing an, att- an attacking outlook. But then, yeah, does Diaby get enough of the ball in that area to to then not be wasted? It's, it's, a, it's a difficult one because then you probably push Tielemans further forward and play Eric Bonham and Louise. That that could be an option. I think you know, if they're going to have it, 70, t- 70% Tim possession. Dougie, yeah, Tielemans. You always play that box midfield, but it yeah. just depends on how deep. So he goes Tielemans, Zaniolo, further forward of Tim and Dougie. But again, it's a big game to bring Eric Bonham into. Yeah, Such you've got, a big you've got, game. You've got to be ready, haven't you? You've got to be ready for these games. You, yeah. you said it before. If you want to prove that you're going to be a top player, are you going to go on and be like a job in championship midfielder or are you going to prove yourself to be in your pressure lines in the Premier League? Carpe mm. DM. Yeah, well, yes, I know, Kev, but I just think there's days and there's days. Nice there was a, yeah. a Ming tomorrow and McGinn suddenly were allowed yeah. to play, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I'm looking at that and I'm like, is that them three are tailor made for this game and none of them are available. Yeah. yeah, and obviously, we don't want Louise to get another yellow card because uh, then he would miss two games still. He would miss the Brentford and then the, 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 the 
I think it's Arsenal, isn't it? The week after. Oh, Jesus, so yeah. we don't want that to happen. In, he's got two more games where it doesn't uh, doesn't count, uh, where it still counts. So we really don't want that to happen. Lewis saying there wouldn't mess with the system. Look at the Spurs match. Yeah, yeah, I, I do agree. I do agree. You don't. Again, you want. It's it's funny, isn't it? Because you play these systems to be more defensive against teams that are, are, are kind of higher up and more threat. But you'd think that it'd be better playing the system that you're most you're most comfortable with. with against those teams, you know. So it's just uh, it's just a strange one. Um, we kind of got through. Like I think without Kamara, we've done better than what I thought we would. I thought we'd really yeah. miss him, but the time we really did miss him was the Tottenham game, and this is like that's the best team we played, isn't it? In that run, and obviously now yeah. Man City are a team of that likeness, even better team. So yeah. you know it, it it could become apparent after 20 minutes. We really miss Kamara and we're going to get battered. But yeah, I, I, know, I, I, I find I, another way, haven't you? I do yeah. think Lewis makes a really good point, but I think the difference is uh, Spurs at home, I think being that defensive was a bad move. Man City away, I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're Real Madrid or, you know, Bayern Munich, you're probably going to have, they're probably going to have 70% possession ish. So in that, in that situation, you're going to have a lot less of the ball. Then you can find games like that when you've got wide players that are just wasted because they've never got the ball. So I know yeah. you need best form of form of best form of defense is absolutely attack, and I want us mm. to to go for it and take our opportunities. But in the same token, maybe be a bit more pragmatic. But then you've got the opportunity to change it if it feels like you you're back against the wall. Um, I'm sure Uno, you know, knows what he's doing. Absolutely, and 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 on that, do you think he will kind of just try and stay in the game? Um, you know, if we can be one nil down with 10 minutes to go and then go for it? Or do you think he will, he will just say, look, go out and play your game. And, 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 you know, we've, we've got good enough players on the pitch to do what we, what we can do. Yeah. I think, I think, I think you'll probably just show him the video of the game at Villa Park and just go do that. That's literally the only one he can show him because all the others have been batterings. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> do that lads. Don't do the one that year before. Don't don't no. give up a two-nil lead. Oh, yeah, let's not yeah. forget, you know, the, the last year we went we did go two nil up there. I know obviously they came back and roared back to to win well, it. But, it's know. season before, season before. Sorry, yeah. season before. Last yes. year was three one, one, one it. We yeah, did all we right last the year as half, well. We? we done yeah, better we were half half in the time. first half. Yeah. Watkins scored in yeah. the uh, good yeah. goal, yeah. So yeah, yeah. But so you know, obviously we've I think with these teams you can see we're getting closer and closer to them, aren't we? In now obviously getting wins against them. So I do think they'll see us as a really really difficult team um yeah i think i think uh, I, I think they'll be looking at it as much of a challenge there's pressure on them you know we're in april and they're they're still right in a battle with liverpool and arsenal for the league they're not they're not top of the league no. so you All know right, sorry to jump in are you not playing this week yeah they're playing chelsea on thursday mm. away that's a tough game isn't it that 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 could almost put them out of it no no, George, yeah. George, George, George. I know they're out of it, Kev. Go on, tell me. George, you're talking about it wrong, mate. You're talking about it wrong. <laughs> what you're supposed to say is Man United playing this week. They've got an opportunity to close the gap on Aston Villa. That's always got to be the phrase that you use. Don't Sorry, mate. Yeah. Point. It's the Come mid-offs on. of all mid-offs, that is. I just, yeah, I just, is. Want, them, I just want them gone. So it's, it's mathematically yeah. impossible. And I can they're stop thinking gone. about the nightmare that Man United are in my life. Already, I just want them gone. gone. Yeah, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Until it's mathematically possible. Yeah. I know what you mean. Yeah. Um, looks like it's going to be one-one. Tottenham, uh, Tottenham West Ham. Looks like it's going to be one-one. It's ninety-fourth minute, and it's there was four minutes of injury time. So, yeah, looks like it's going to be one-all, which gives us an opportunity. Kevin gives us a real opportunity. It really does give an opportunity, and obviously, you know, we got a one-one draw at West Ham. They, it looks like they're going to get a one-one draw at West Ham. So, um, George looks like he's looking at. So, what's going oh, on, yeah, George? I'm right on the counter here at the end. No, oh, we're getting a bit of live commentary. Yeah, oh, I think we're actually a little bit behind. So, yeah, you probably no, know. No, it's finished. It's finished. It's, it's finished. Done, yeah. it's finished. See, so yeah. All, yeah. All, all they've done is matched our result against them. So we, that, that, that result against West Ham doesn't seem like the two yeah. points that everyone said now. So what we've got to do, though, also is now think about the opportunity. So we're, we're, we're before the game, you know, if Spurs won all of their games with with a slightly bit of goal difference, then they would, if they just won all the games at the end of the season, they would finish ahead of us. But now... They've had a draw. If we beat Man City tomorrow, we actually are then properly in the driving seat. I don't know; it's unlikely, but why not? Exactly, exactly. Now, I don't want to mention his name, but does a certain player come back to haunt us? Oh, he's actually fit for once, isn't he? Jemba, Jemba. Yeah. 
Twan Zebi plays Spice Rips, which now? Who are we talking about? I have no he idea who, he, who, he who shall not be named. Oh, uh, Jim, Jim Grealish. Yeah, good old, yeah. Good old Jim. Um, I don't know whether, like, Pep will play a bit of a wild card and start him just to kind of, you know, be a bit of a maverick. Well, he was a bit prickly, wasn't he, with the, with the press today when asked about it? He was. He was really prickly with the press, wasn't I've he? I've not really? seen that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Basically, we've asked a lot, why does he have to berate him on the pitch? I thought it was a f- fantastic question to ask. I'm glad that he, he actually asked it because it is, it, and he did a go, oh, it's just about me. He kind of made it sarcastic, but I actually thought when he was being sarcastic, I thought he sounded like he was telling the truth because there's absolutely no need for him to do that to Grealish on the pitch. Just wait until you get into the dressing room. He you likes doing in. a bit of that though, Pep, doesn't he? You've seen yeah, him having that the corner and that. I don't yeah. mind it. It's big enough to handle it himself. But yeah, does he, does he come back and haunt, haunt us? Probably, yeah. No, no way it goes. Yeah, probably, yeah. Yeah, Harlan will get six and Duke really should get six assists. Um, no, um, really it's a game. Does he start that one? I don't know if he'll start. I don't know if he will. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I, 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 I feel like if there was ever going to be a game where he's going to show what he was all about, then I think he'd probably want to do it against his hometown team, wouldn't he? Just to prove that yeah. he's back. Because people really had his moment against us yet, has he, since he's no. gone? And people will be questioning whether, like, you'll be up for it against us. But obviously, bear in mind, he loves us so much. Yes, yes. Uh, John is there putting that we've we've now got nearly sixty people watching, so some people must have liked it. But we've we only had three likes at the, at the at the last count. So please, guys, please do hit that like button if you haven't already. We we're up to twenty nine now, so almost half of the people watching have liked. So please do hit the like button. It really does mean a lot. Absolutely free of charge as well to do it uh, and subscribe if you're new to the channel. We are so close to two thousand six hundred. Uh, and the, 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 there's a link pinned at the top of the chat with the membership um, link. If you do want to become a member and support the channel even more, click that link, follow the instructions or hit the dollar sign at the bottom and um, donate to the channel. Or, as I say, become an official Villa Park Pod follower. Um, so, yeah, as PJJ says, could Dougie or Rogers come back to haunt them? Absolutely. Love it. Absolutely. Love it. Oh, you forgot Rogers was one of their kids, wasn't he? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Um, so it, they could absolutely come back to haunt them as well, hundred percent, hundred percent. Let's just um, let's just have a look at the um, at the statistics, which don't, don't make do it, for Rich. pleasant, which don't make for pleasant reading. But See you later, Rich. Just... I'm done now. See you later. I'm not, not, I'm not watching but we do story. need we do need to look. So we played 47 times in the Premier League. We have won eight times. We've won two times away from home, and we've had ten draws against uh, Man City. And they've won 19 times. Um, last result, obviously, was the wonderful victory, 1-0. Uh, 3-1, um, we lost last season. Ollie Watkins scored. Duran Neely scored an absolute worldie. one all. We drew this um, as well earlier on that season. That was, I think, quite a, that was a Leon Bailey uh, yep. good strike. Um, 3-2, obviously, we know all about that. And then 2-1 before. So, look, every game's been pretty close. We've scored in every game as well, which is quite... Um, which is quite encouraging. And then we're looking at the latest form. So obviously Man City, three wins and two draws in their last five games. Villa, three wins, one draw and one defeat. So not too dissimilar in terms of form. Obviously 11 point, uh, sorry, 10 points for us um, and uh, 11 points for, for Man City. And looking at this, uh, as we know, uh, very, very tight positioning wise you know four for Villa third for Man City 18 wins 19 for uh, for Man City we've obviously lost seven games but we've drawn less than them our goal score per game isn't too different average goals conceded isn't too different either chances created is is, is fairly similar so you know like I say this is I think someone Lewis in the chat was like you know if it was 10th v 11th people would say it was a it was a tight game this is third against fourth. It has to be classed as a tight game, boys. It has to be. Of course it does. Absolutely. Absolutely it does. And and based on those recent performances, I think you could say that, that it probably won't be the romp that people think it might be. I don't think we're that Aston Villa anymore. Now, I know we can say that what happened, obviously, at Anfield, we got away with three that day and Newcastle was a bit of a horror show. But I think that that, that was just, they were both a bit, you know, aberrations, basically. I just don't think with that team now that's going to go to the Etihad, if I might rue this comment, and get get six or seven put past us. I mean, they they could arguably do that to anybody, but I just don't see it happening. I do I do think I do think we'll score because we do score most of the time. Very rare that obviously Emery has a nil nil, isn't it? So um, 
Yeah, I, look, look th this this is a direct opportunity for us. To, I mean, if this was anywhere, you're absolutely right. If this was anywhere else, if this was third against second in the championship, they'd be saying, "Oh, can you know, can Leeds close the gap on the top two or whatever? You know, can Southampton like the Southampton Ipswich the other night? That was fourth against I think second or third at the time. And Ipswich when they go top, Southampton when they get they close the gap. You know, no one's saying, "Oh, this team or the team are X number of points ahead, so it doesn't doesn't count." It's like there's, there's this. There's this special There's club, a mystique, isn't, isn't there? There's a mystique yeah. around City. And look, yeah. they are still in the title race. Um, and as we know, there is a there is a, a likelihood they win they, they win this game. But I think I think Pep has said himself, you know, Emery is up there with the best coaches in the world. What a job he's done at Aston Villa. What a job he will set us up for for tomorrow night. And the players, we know that the players will do their level, level best to to, re, to enact the plan that he's created for them. And that's that's all you can ask for. You know, we've had previous managers where players have kind of lost their heads or done things differently. But we know that, other than the Chaos Twins, but we know, we know, we know that, we know that the plan is going to be, is going to be set up. Um, I, I don't know if I, if I could quite handle the playing across the back though. <laughs> That we've been doing, that we've been doing so much lately. I think we probably need to get it, get it a clear a little bit more than we've maybe done before. But you know, I don't know. Like, have have City got that searing pace? If they don't play Doku, have they got that anymore? I, I don't know. Like, it's it's a difficult one, isn't it? I think I think playing a crowd out, out from the back there. That's what we do. That's what they do yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, is, is he going to change his style fundamentally? And I think Lewis made a good point silly earlier if, on about Silly it. if we lost a goal, though, to a stupid one like that, like a big game like this, wouldn't it? I think yeah, he might be a bit more conservative myself. It'd also be silly if they lost a goal, like, wouldn't it? You know, with, um, you yeah. know, or Ortega shanking a kick straight to uh, Morgan Rogers to I get his first goal. I have been known to do stuff like that. Uh, but Gaz mm -hmm. says they don't press so hard these days, and I don't think they do. You know, I don't know if, you know, obviously, when he's got, when he's got that space to run into, Haaland's like really fast, but I don't think he asks him to do that job in terms of that closing down as much now. And yeah. I don't think De Bruyne is as, as as mobile as he used to be. You know, he's got the still got the passing quality. We know that. Obviously, he's not net. Foden can close down quickly, but he's more got speed with the ball in possession. Grealish, we know, kind of, he hasn't got that searing pace without the ball. So they're a slightly different team, aren't they? They'll kind of suffocate you and, and, and sort of pass you to pass you into submission a lot of the time. Um, you know, so so I, I don't know necessarily we'll we'll get that. And they they like to put overloads in midfield. So we look at the goal we scored against them at home. It was through a pass, a quick passing, direct pass into midfield. Yet yeah, I don't know if it was fully intentional from um, from Tielemans, but it was a quick pass on to um, on to Bailey, who was then running right at the heart of the defence. And so many times we got through by just one touch pass through that midfield, one touch pass through that midfield. If we if we dilly dally on the ball in that midfield, that's where they get the overloads in. That they bring the full backs in, they bring one of the centre backs in, and they'll they'll outnumber you in midfield. And that's where they, that's where City try and dominate you. Yeah, so absolutely. We, I absolutely. think we've just got to move the ball quickly. Yeah, and let's not forget as well at Villa Park, we had twenty two shots to their two shots. We created numerous chances, numerous chances, and you know, and a lot of those players that played them will be playing. Playing on Wednesday night, you know, Gavardi had a nightmare, didn't he? Mm -hmm. yeah, Villa, Villa Park, you know, and it felt like a lot of their players were just caught on the heels. And like that, they, I, I said it earlier on, but they they won't have forgotten that performance. That's the most humble they'll have been by any team, any team, you know. Even like you know, Real Madrid weren't doing that to him. So um, yeah, it was, it was you know that that performance from Villa was 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 a four nil, was a three or four nil win, wasn't it? Really? Yeah, it deserved more, man. Definitely. Yeah, way Definitely way way did. more. Definitely did. Um, I think uh, Diego Carlos as well. I think it's good that he sh well, should start. You know, obviously we don't know for definite, but he had a great game against um, Haaland last game, and and you want that physicality, don't you? you? Want that dominance in terms of being able to push him off the ball, not being intimidated by by um, by Haaland, don't you, George? And it's I think I think this is a game that's sort of made for a made for a Diego Carlos. Yeah, like, you know, obviously I mentioned Mings earlier, kind of a similar like, isn't it? But yeah, Carlos, big boy, physical presence, been there and done it. Obviously, it's just, you know, obviously we're away this time and like 
we really had Villa Park was alive that night, wouldn't it? And they kind of got us over the line there. So obviously it'd be a different battle this time round. But yeah, you know, hopefully they can start that sort of that that confrontation again. And Carlos gives him a quick reminder that he had him in his pocket and maybe can piss him off a little bit. But uh, yeah, I don't think we'll have it all our own way this time. I'm pretty sure Roy, it won't be Roy 22 Ke- shots Keane, this time, lads. <laughs> yeah, Roy Keane apparently called him a League Two striker the other day. So I've seen that, yeah that's, yeah, that's a way to get on his nerves just before he plays plays against Aston Villa. Cheers, Roy. Roy. Cheers, Roy. <laughs> Cheers, Roy. <laughs> Maybe um, he did that on purpose. Yeah, um, I also think you know, yeah, clearly at home we had the massive advantage. It, it was rocking at Villa Park that night, but you know our away fans can cause some noise, can't they? And I, you know, I want to be watching that game tomorrow night, hearing the away fans singing loud and proud as we as we show everyone what a team we are. And I think it's a really big opportunity. You know, we all know a draw would be a, would be a cracking result, but and I think more than that's a huge bonus. But I just want to go there on Wednesday, even if we lose, and get people to think, "Crikey, Villa, are, Villa are decent, Villa are decent." And I actually do think we're owed a good performance away at one of the one of the big teams, aren't we? Because we've not, you know, I know we beat Spurs and and, and Chelsea, but you know, in terms of the real top top teams, um, it will be the same when we obviously go to Arsenal. What what kind of you know? I still think you know we could well be at this stage talking about whether we're still in the title race at that point there. You know, if we beat City, then, you know. And we've got you, Brentford. You, yeah, yeah, you got That's Brentford. That's a big one, you? that game. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. But yeah. They've, all, they've all got big games as well. And they, yeah. you know, we've got players missing. They've got players missing. We've got weaknesses. They've got weaknesses. It's just going to be chess, isn't it? Exactly. It's who can hold the nerve. Um, Alex, uh, in the chat, I watched the December game again last night. If not for Edison, we would have destroyed them 5-0. It's why we play the game. Let's just go for it. Come on. Gaz says we've got to be brave. Kevin says, I think City will come flying out of the blocks. My fear is a set piece. Otherwise, we've got players to really hurt them. Yeah, set pieces. I mean, we still weren't great on set pieces against Wolves. Um but we just need to be. I want. I really want. Uh, Martin corners well away to for the box. Yeah, we do. We are giving away a few. Yeah, yeah. Um, Gaz says Roger and Kevin De Bruyne make them completely different. Um, but Carlos bullied Harland. Um, was throwing them around at one point outside of the box. Yes, uh, John said listening to Pep's pre-match interview when asked about the Villa Park loss, he said yes, yes, yes. We deserve to lose that game. Um, uh, yes, Jim, don't forget to like the live. Yes, we've got people liking. I think we're up to nearly 50 now. So if we get over 50, we've got over 80 people watching. So um, please, if we get, I'd, I'd say, I'd say let's get to 70 likes tonight. That would be brilliant. I think um, if we get, so if we get all the ev- everyone, if you get everyone liking it, apparently it does increase the odds of us winning tomorrow night as well. I've it heard. does. It does. Yeah. Um, yeah, um, we'll be back. Lewis, it'll be back for, Gareth will be back after the Man City game. So hopefully after a win, and uh, that'll be amazing. It, it just uh, Easter weekend and all that couldn't uh, couldn't jump on this week, but it will be back this week. Um, yeah, we can't concede goals for fun. No, we're are we plus eighteen at the moment on our goal difference, and Spurs are plus sixteen. Is that right? I think that's right. So yeah, we we've got to be careful with that, hundred percent. So I will get to um, score predictions in a second, boys. So guys in the chat, get your score predictions in. Um, for tomorrow. I think it's going to be a little bit more conservative, I would say. Um, yes, Dini, I would start Dini. Yes, Stephen, I would definitely start Dini. Are you boys again on the Dini train? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. 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 Oh, we did have another question as well. Uh, MC said, will Duran be able to play 90 minutes? I, I don't I don't think he'll play him for 90 minutes anyway. Mm. Um, I think he'll try and... I think he'll try and maybe... You've got Zaniolo who can play up there. You've got maybe a Diaby who could play up there, although you lose the physicality. You've got Zaniolo who can play up there. Yeah, Rogers. sorry, you, you can play up there. So I think it will be hard for him to play the 90 minutes for, for definite. Yeah, I think he struggled. Definite, yeah. At that, at that intensity, I think he struggled with how much he has around the pitch anyway as well. Yes, yes, yes. Um, so let's see what we're getting in. Neil is saying 2-2. Um, uh, Setterstein is saying 2 0 Man City. Um, Michael is saying Man City 1, Aston Villa 2. Oh, I'd love, love to see that. There's that positivity for you. Um, Gaz saying, yeah, with regards to um, the the situation with the, with the forward play, yeah, I think that's probably a good point. You know, Rogers may be starting on the bench and you can bring him on up top maybe later on in the game. 
which is uh which is something to to think about definitely um lewis is saying a 2-1 villa away win uh, so another villa victory there 1-1 one, one for flying without ming steven is saying 1-1 one, one. gaz oaks is saying 3-1 city rachel saying 3-0 man city um bear in the gun saying it could be anything it's a very unpredictable game uh alex is saying one nil oil city <laughs> george i'll come to you first i'm getting loads of scores flying in so i'll come to you first mate what are you saying for the score and scorers if any for villa i think it's i think it's a narrow defeat i think 2-1 city i just think like their home record over a long long time is going to go in their favour here. Obviously, we're missing... All, sorry, Kev, I know you hate to hear this. But we're, <laughs> we're missing Mr Watkins up front, who's, you know, our most effective player. I don't think there's probably much argument about that. And obviously, we're talking about physicality for the whole podcast, and we're missing most of ours. But at the same time, you know, the players we've got can can do a bit of damage as well. But I just think this is probably too much of an ask. Just get out of there without, you know, just... like As you said, Kev, if we're going to lose lose with a bit of pride and don't get a spanking and show teams that we are a good side now, you know? And yeah, you know, it is what it is, mate. Obviously I don't want to be, I don't want to be right here, but that's, I can only say what I think might happen. Fair enough. Do we, do we score then? Yeah, I said, sorry, 2-1, didn't I? So two I'll one, go who's, with who's a, scoring? Um, I'll go with, I'll go with Yuri Tielemans goal for us. I wouldn't mind him scoring. I, I can see a screamer from Yuri. Yeah. Um, uh, Dickie said 1-1. One, one. Duran Screamer rescues a point. PJJ says 1-0 or 2-1 to the mighty Villa. Rich says 2-1 away win. Rogers and Bailey to score. Um, Dam says he can't even think about it. Uh, Kevin said head says 2-1 Villa. Heart says 3-1 Villa. I love there it. we go. Uh, Jim is saying we will get cheated and lose 1-0 after defending stoutly for 99 <laughs> minutes until the controversial referee decision. Yeah, sounds about right, mate. Um, Adamski says 3-1 Villa. Why the F not? Exactly, mate. Exactly. Uh, I'm going to save Stephen's comment for a second. Um, Kay says 1-0 again. Dougie with a rocket. Um, Dan says believe... New man, come on. Absolutely. Gaz says, I think it is a free hit, but I know someone who won't, and that's Unai Emery. 100%. 100%. Yep. Um, PJ, Bailey and Rogers out wide when they are forward with only two at the back. Exactly. Uh, John said, would take a point 100% after tonight's result. Yes, exactly. 100%. No win at Man um, City since 2007, lads. I don't think that's been mentioned either, is it? No. Was it Was it Gabby who scored in that that's one? Carew and Sean Maloney. I think I, th- I think it, I think it was Pitt McParland and, and uh, Gary Shaw. <laughs> yeah. Pongo wearing. <laughs> yeah, Billy Walker. Um, Watkins is out. I, uh, how long Watkins out for? I think he's. I think he could be in contention for Saturday, but yeah. he's back that, on the grass. You, he's back on the grass. Yeah, you one. never know, do you? Yeah. You never back on the grass. Know. Back for preseason yeah. traded. For a yeah, year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, because we've got we've got the Lille game, haven't we, next Thursday? Mm-hmm. So it's going to be... Uh, Needing be back pronto, boys. Balancing it up, yeah. yeah. Dan says 2-0 Villa. I'm going to say a 1-1 one, one draw. I'm going to say really kind of hard working. I think we will play it quite tight. And I think, you know, Man City boring. will have most of the possession. Boring, we'll try Mitch. and make it as boring as possible. You're boring. And we'll get a 1-1 one, one draw. And I think the RB will score. Um, (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) I'm trolling you. Thanks, Kev. Thanks, Kev. I'll just uh, mute you in a second. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But I was saving this because Stephen said, it sounds like we need a Kev. Come on. (laughs) So over to you. Over to you, Mr. Tyler. Man City nil, Aston Villa three, McGinn, Kamara, Watkins. Sorted. <laughs> oh, crikey. Is that next I, season? Next yeah. season. Um, look, um, I know I kind of josh about this a lot, and I'm uber optimistic. Um, oh, I, I, it's not in my DNA to say we're not going to win the game. I, I'm, do you know what? I'm going to go for, I think Lewis and, and Michael and a few others said this. I'm going to go for a 2-1 away win for Aston Villa. I'm going to say, and I, and I, I heard George, he's like, his eyes saw his eyes light up when he when he saw that on the screen. Oh, it'd be delicious, wouldn't it? Two one. <laughs> yeah. 
So I'm going to go 2 1 Villa. Uh, goals are going to be scored by, I think, Morgan Rogers is going to score, and I think Louise is going to score. Okay, they're going to both score go the back. winner. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I think Louise is going to score the winner. Penalty. Yeah. We're going to get a contentious contentious VAR penalty, and we're going to feel like the tables have properly turned, and we're going to get a big club decision. There you go. Well, the, but this is the thing, isn't it? Like, you know, I've gone through all like the, the history of the games, and they've all been fairly tight games. Um, so it would, it would, and the way we're playing at the moment, the way City are playing, the way that the both teams have that respect for each other, what it, what's at stake as well for the game, it, it has to, it has to indicate that both teams will give each other that respect. So I know it's been, it's, it is hard to call, isn't it? You know, like we'll go into, I'm sure we'll go into Brentford at home and say, you know, yes, it's, you know, if we play like we should, we'll, we'll be fairly comfortable and we'll win. But you can't say that for this for this city game, and like, but either way, I don't think you can say at the moment City will beat us four or five nil, and I don't think you can say Villa, you know, will will kind of, you know, go out and and, and win comfortably because we're just not gonna. I don't think we'll approach it in that way. It's an un- so that's un- why it's gonna be difficult. It's an unpredictable league, isn't it? If you look, if you looked at our December. Um, fixtures ahead of time you would have gone oh Arsenal Man City back to back but it's all right we've got Sheffield United after that not long after that and if you'd have said we would have taken seven points and and where we would have dropped points would have been Sheffield United in injury time as well you would have said get out of town or words words to the effect of that there's three possible outcomes tomorrow there's a Manchester City win there's an Aston Villa win and there's a draw is there yeah (laughs) yeah I know yeah um for anyone that didn't know how football works (laughs) so um like one one of those outcomes has got to happen. Um, why the hell can't can't we uh, can't we sneak a win? Someone at exactly. some point's got to beat them. Exactly. I think to be fair, the game is about Man City more than it's about us. If top Man City turn up, I don't think it matters what we do. We ain't probably getting nothing. But if they turn up half assed or half cooked, the chance is there for us. But we've got to be ready and on our top form to get anything. I would suggest. Yeah. Yeah, well, look, I think a lot of people in the chat are, are very positive. Ugent saying 2-1 Villa. Al Sean saying Luis Diaby and Leon to score 3-2 up the Villa. Oh, what absolutely. a game that would be. Jim's had a change of heart. Bailey's going to tear Lewis a new one and score. Carlos at a corner and we win 2-0. He won't be playing Don't after what we've done to him last time. No <laughs> chance, mate. So there is loads and loads and loads of... Um, uh, oh yeah, the match could be abandoned <laughs> as the fourth result, Kev. There you go, there you go. Um, but yeah, there's loads of positivity. Postponed. And that... There's a fifth one. Thank yes, you. yes. Yeah, uh, and and that's that's why that's why we love it, and that's why we're in the position that we're in because we've had some fantastic results this season. And if we get the win on uh, tomorrow night, we we'll surpass our points total from last season already with with seven games to go, um, which is just unreal. So, yeah. Would you say if we got the win tomorrow, would you say that fourth was 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 in the bag? I th- I think if we get the win tomorrow, like I think that Liverpool and Arsenal will be shitting it. Yeah, I mean, I think if we if we get the win tomorrow, we're we're, we're winning the fucking league, lads. Sorry, <laughs> 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 we do the double over Man City. Let's go. Let's let's get take me to the Emirates now. Let's let's have them. <laughs> I think that's a good that's, I think that's the best way to end it if we beat City tomorrow we're winning the league <laughs> what more can you say that's going to get clipped up that's going to get clipped up yeah, just take, 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 you'll have to bleep a bit of it though sorry sorry I <laughs> apologise right um, guys thank you all for watching Kev Rit, uh, George amazing stuff um, amazing stuff thank you uh, for your contributions tonight we've had over a hundred watching in the chat and your comments and, and everything has been amazing real positivity at the moment which is just fantastic a great result for us today for Tottenham drawing against uh, West Ham can we capitalize tomorrow night well we will certainly give it our best shot I'm sure make sure you hit that like button subscribe if you're new to the channel we are that close to hitting 3600 subscribers so help us hit that tonight um that would be brilliant we'll be back with instant match reaction tomorrow from myself um possibly a match reaction tomorrow as well with the boys we'll see what happens but certainly um thursday then match preview for um for brentford the games are coming thick and fast let's get that victory uh thank you all for watching and as always remember we all follow the villa 